Hey, what's good everyone? Welcome to Ice Rink Diaries, local ice man here. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about our dehumidification system. We have a desiccant dehumidifier that we use to remove the humidity from the rink. Controlling the humidity is pretty important in an ice rink. Uh, as we lay water, some of the water evaporates, turns into moisture and collects in the building. When you have a big public skate, you get two, 300 people in the building, all that body heat. Uh, that, that heat gathers in the building and it, it turns to moisture. Then if you don't have a proper dehumidification system, it basically, condenses on the ceiling and drips down. Uh, we had times when our old demification system wasn't working. We used to have three mechanical demifiers that really weren't doing a good job. And when, went, and when one went down on a rainy day, the air inside of the building would condense on the top of the ceiling and would kind of work its way down to the bottom of the insulation and drip down in these long rows. You have all these little bumps in the ice and you Probably if you worked at an ice rink and doing a fire went down, you probably know what I'm talking about. Pitting the ice in, that's a big load on a doing a fire because we're spraying water. You know, most of it goes on the ice, but some of it does evaporate in the air. And since it's usually in the summertime, um, from what I understand, warm air holds a lot more moisture and could release a lot more moisture. So um, the air in the building is typically a little bit warmer than in the wintertime. So the dehumidifier has to run a little bit harder. The desiccant dehumidifier really keeps up with the demand here. We never have any problems with it um, when it's running, I should say. Um, we've had a few issues now and then of it uh, breaking down. And as mechanical equipment, all you see maintenance. But it's been really good for us. And um, it's probably the industry standard now in ice rinks. So the next thing we'll do is we'll head outside and I'll show you the inside and outside of that dehumidifier, as well as the control box, the humidistat that kind of cycles it on and off. Then we'll hit the soccer side to show you an old mechanical refrigerant one and how that kind of works. And they get some bonus footage at the end of the of the different fire, the flame itself at night. It looks pretty cool. So I threw it at the end for you guys. So check that out. So this is our discount dubin fire right here. Um, it uses natural gas to remove moisture from the air. We had an old refrigeration one that we got rid of because they weren't really working. We basically replaced three units with this one right here. It was rather expensive. I think the total install with all the piping was about $25,000. So basically what's happening here is air is being pulled from the rink via a big blower fan, I'll show you here in a second, and being processed through the discant wheel and out back to the rink. Here's a quick picture of the duct work coming inside the building. The top duct is the air coming from the rink going to the fire, and the bottom duct is air coming from the dim fire going to the rink. Here's a view of the duct work inside the rink. Where the duct work ends there is where the dimified air is discharged at. As we drive back towards where the dim fire is at, we see where the hemostat is located and where the intake is for the dim fire. So it's just constantly pulling air in, removing the moisture from it, then going back out this way. As it goes through the wheel, the wheel itself picks up the moisture, and, and the air exit of that wheel is drier and a little bit a little bit warmer, so then it goes back out to the rink. On this side of the wheel, a quarter of the wheel essentially, air is being pulled through via fan right here. Air is being pulled through a burner through this wheel, and that air is just basically burning off that moisture and throwing it outside. And not only is that air warm from the burner, it's also a little humid or wet from the moisture being burnt off from the wheel. Let me show you a picture of here of the wheel. Okay, this is a discant wheel right here, and this right here is called the process zone. And this area right here is where the flame's at. This is what's the recharge zone. And all dehumidifiers, all discant dehumidifiers, I should say, have this 25% to 75% ratio. The fan or the blower for the dehumidifier is right here. This is the fan that's pulling air from the rink, and it's pulling it through the wheel. And here's the motor right here real quick. But it's pulling it through the wheel, uh, coming this way right here, coming down this duct, through that grate right there, through these filters, and I took two out so you can see, and it goes into this wheel right here. And then it basically, from there, it comes through here, and it gets sucked and pushed back into the rink via that duct right there. Now the term desiccant I haven't touched on yet. A desiccant is just a, it's a chemical that absorbs moisture and not only does it absorb moisture but when heated it uh, releases the moisture and liberates the moisture back into the air so one important thing to note about this dehumidifier is airflow airflow in the charge zone over here is moving this way the fans on the other side pulling air through this wheel uh, warm air through this wheel as it rotates past and the air on this side is moving this way so the 
the recharge zone air, the heated air is going this way, and the demified air is going this way. That way, that on the other side of this drum right here is where the moisture is being picked up, and as it rotates around, then it's go, and it's liberated by the heat. And this is where I actually learned something. I always assumed that this flame was burning the moisture off, like evaporating it, but it's not so. The heat really, what the heat is doing, it's it's liberating the moisture from the desiccant wheel. This wheel is made up of a bunch of corrugated sections that are soaked in a desiccant. Basically, a desiccant is a hydroscopic substance that induces or sustains a state of dryness. This wheel is made of a bunch of corrugated sections laying flat this way, I guess parallel to the airflow, and the air goes through those corrugated sections, and the desiccant itself absorbs the moisture as the air moves through and it exits and goes out to the rink. And when the wheel spins around to the charge zone, the wheel is heated and that vapor is released from the wheel out to the outside in our case. Back to this side over here, this is where the air is sucked in. And there, that's the burner unit, that's the desiccant wheel, and that's the exhaust fan out this way. And this is the, the exhaust fan motor. So essentially, air is being sucked in. And there's a filter right here too, 16 by 16 by 2. And this is the burner assembly, you got two igniters right there. And this is your the flame control unit area where there's safety switches. If there's no flame, the system shuts off. Um, you don't want natural gas pouring out with no flame. So there's a safety switch on here. And that's where the low reactivation temp comes in. The low, the low reactivation temp also comes in when, when this breaker right here, sometimes this breaker pops because this fan right here, the, the fan blade gets loose and it binds up as it, as it starts. It has a hard start. So as it starts, sometimes the fan binds up and that breaker pops right there. You have to come out and reset it and it turns on. And we got the desk kit wheel right here and this is the chain itself that drives the wheel. It's a rather big wheel compared to this tiny sprocket that, that drives it. In the enclosure on the other side is a motor and a little sprocket, a little motor too. But this sprocket drives this big chain wheel. And every like five, six years, the teeth on that sprocket wear down, so we have to replace it. So I'm gonna save that for a different video and I'll show you what that looks like uh, when I do that maintenance on that. Here's a view of the ramp on the discount wheel. And again, a safety switch that's located on the other side in an enclosure and I'll show that to you when I have to do some maintenance on it. But that switch has a little wheel at the end and it extends on a pivoting arm and it just kind of sits on that wheel and, and that little wheel on the drum I should say just spins and when that ramp comes by it lifts up clicks and comes back down and every eight minutes this ramp spins by and, and it lifts a little wheel up and an arm and it closes the contacts and a, a signal to the timer and re basically resets the timer and if that timer doesn't get reset probably like at 10 minutes the system shuts itself down so this this if this drum starts rotating too slow because the chain's skipping or the chain's falling off or the motor start working, then it's designed to shut itself off so you don't burn this wheel out. Quick review here. The air from the rink is being pulled via this duct down through the filters, through the discount wheel, where the moisture from the air is being absorbed. Then the air is pushed back to the rink via this duct right here. The air is being sucked in on this side through a filter, through the burner, where the warm air liberates the moisture from the wheel, then it exits outside this way. And a desiccant wheel just constantly turns around in the process zone where it picks up moisture, absorbing moisture from the air as it passes through. Then it rotates back this way into the charge zone and the heat from the burner liberates the moisture from the wheel and it exits the, the duct right here and goes outside. And this is how a desiccant dehumidifier works. Let's go over to the soccer side where we could have an old mechanical refrigerator one and I'll explain how that works. So I was able to pull the cover off for us to take a look at. So what's going on here is that air would be pulled in through the back and there's filters right there. Then it would be pushed out through the front and this is the blower wheel. And inside here you have the coil cabinet and what is happening here and, and the compressor itself is missing. You have the electric motor back there, the accumulator, which I don't want to get into what that is. That's a whole different video. Um, but the compressor itself is missing and you can see the connection there, the connection right here. There's another one right there. So how this worked, it would drop the air 20 degrees to pour the moisture out of it. Now, why did it work so much well for the ice rink is because the air, you know, during the winter time could be 50 degrees already. 
So when you're dropping the air 20 degrees down to 30, this unit would freeze up. So I think in swimming pool applications, I don't think this is a, a bad you know, application for swimming pools where the air is already maybe like 80, 70 degrees. Um, but for ice rinks, this wasn't the best option. It was At the time, I guess it was good, but now that the desk and fires are here, um, most ice rinks, I think if they have get newer systems, would get a desk and fire. They wouldn't get a old mechanical one. So there's just various relays and switches in here. Um, there's a drain with these things. So as it drops the, and the temperature of the air, 20 degrees, all the moisture would fall out and would go into a drain and would drain away. So we had three of these things on the ice side to be able to, to keep up and it, it barely keep up. When one would go down, then we'd be kind of foggy inside the rink. And uh, the fail points on this were the compressor itself, the shaft seals on the, on the compressor, um, the coils would leak a few times and again it would freeze up over the winter often. We'd have to shut it down for a little bit then let it thaw out then turn it back on. Disc and fires are definitely much more efficient and more effective too. All right, this is the control box for the dimmifier. It's back here in the Zamboni room. And right now we have it off because we're looking at things, but usually it's in the auto position and it runs off the hemostat when it's in the, when it's in the auto position. And I'll show you that here in a minute. Uh, manual is just always on. Uh, we've never really had on that in manual. It's usually off or in the auto position. Um, the power on just means there's power going to it. The reactivation, that goes on when everything's going. And it's probably easier to explain this when to explain these things first so the rotation fault is when the drum starts spinning like I said there's that little switch that clicks up and down on that ramp on the wheel the, the descant drum so if that doesn't spin once every eight minutes then you get a rotation fault and the system shuts down therefore the low reactivation temp that's when the flames not going and that could be because the flame didn't did ignite it because the I don't know the igniters didn't work or something but usually it's because the exhaust fan doesn't kick on or the when it does, it's a hard start, so when it kicks on, sometimes it trips that breaker because that uh, the exhaust fan comes loose. Um, so that's that's when the flame doesn't turn on, and so this one does, is when the wheel is not spinning. And this is just a general alarm if something else is wrong. But these are the two main things that we have to kind of uh, keep an eye on, is this drum spinning and, and that the flame is going. And basically, if these two things are going and these lights are not on, this light will turn on, the reactivation on light. So that means everything's going. Let's go ahead and kick this thing on and see if it turns on. And when we do kick it on, first you'll hear the uh, the process air motor, the motor that pulls air from the building to get demified. First that kicks on, as well as the desk kit wheel starts spinning. So those are two things to start first. That's what you hear first. Then like about 10 seconds later or something like that, the exhaust fan turns on. That's the flame itself. So it goes again in two phases. So let's go ahead and give this thing a, a turn on. Oh, so again, it's cold out today. It's pretty dry. It's a um, sunny day for uh, March 2nd, 3rd, whatever the day is here. So it's um, it's not calling for demification right now. So we'll just leave it at that. All right, let's go ahead and check out the demon stat. Again, it's, when it's in the auto mode, it runs off the demon stat. And let's go ahead and check that out right now. All right, I climbed way up here to show you our hemostat. This is located up next to this intake vent. And right now it's set for about 55. And that seems to be a good setting for us. If you get the humidity too high, obviously it's wet. And if you get it too low, you start losing your ice. Your ice would kind of, uh, you'll start losing your ice at the corners. It starts uh, evaporating. Where water goes from a solid to a vapor without going through the liquid state. Um, I kind of forget what that's called, sublimation or something? I don't know. Anyway, this is our humanistat, and it's located right next to the intake. I gave you a special treat of seeing this thing run at night because I think it's a little and unique. So, there's the wheel slowly running. Let's take a look at the burner over here. Turn the light off, you can get a better effect. Woo wee, that's a flame. down here. Alright, thanks for watching everyone and I hope you learned something today and like your local ice man says, stay cool.